That's why I love y'all. <laughs> uh, all right. Didn't they do good, though? I, uh, Niles got here about 5.30. I was sweating. I was like, I got to to tell them something now. And so I just said, okay, I got this song in my spirit, Niles. Can you pick it up? And he just started playing it. What did, what'd you start playing, Niles? What was, the, what was the part we learned first? You remember? Play it, don't sing it. We know you can sing. It sounds good now, but that's all I had. I was like, this is all I got. He's like, oh, that'll work. Next thing you know, we said, verse, verse, verse. I said, now, look up. This is not behind the music. We have in church. I'm just going to tell you. I said, I want carnival. Like, I want it to taste like cotton candy. Did I say this? Do it taste like cotton candy a little bit? Does it have like, it tastes like funnel cake just a little bit? And some of y'all want to run out of here. It's just a funnel cake, amen. Amen, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, thank you guys very much. Look, we're we just going to talk for a little while, for 29 minutes. We're just going to talk, okay? We're going to answer some questions. And today is the day I've been waiting for, amen. So what are we doing today? Okay, but what's the subject today? Money, 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 money. We should have did that. Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, Stan. All right. Y'all, I still hear the, uh, the track. Can we mute everything but me, please? I said, there we go. Okay, beautiful. So today we're going to talk about money. Okay, so some of y'all don't get nervous, uh, but um, imprint team lock the doors. Okay, we're just going. <laughs> today we're going to talk about money, and I wanted to do this. I wanted to sort of sit down just for a second. Um, a little home, guys. If we could just mute everything but me, I'd be, I'd be great. Y'all know I get, I'm easily distracted. There we go. I'm like, squirrel, squirrel. Okay, uh, wh what I wanted to do, because I, I think too many people try to preach money, and money, and I think in sometimes in church, it, you've been preached to so much about it that, that you don't want to hear it no more. But I don't want to preach to you, I just want to talk to you. Amen? Amen? Amen. And I don't want to just talk to you about church money you're just about church money then that's a small perspective on a, on a very uh how do i say this on, on, a, on a very large uh platform okay church money is a, is literally a tenth of the conversation that we need okay <laughs> It's, it's literally a tenth of the conversation that we need to have about money. And so what I want to do, I'm going to allow you guys to ask questions just like we've been doing. But I, I want to start by just giving you a, a quick little dissertation on money. Can we do that? So I have 15 things. Somebody say 15. 15 facts about money. 15 facts about money. Now, some of y'all who don't ever take notes, this is not the day for that. <laughs> Might want to pull out your phone. Dust off your notes application. <laughs> Dust off your notes application and, and, and write some of these down because I, I think they will help you, okay? I want to have a sincere conversation about money because the, the church either misexplains money or perverts the conversation about money. Okay, not every church, but the church in, as a whole, because, because money is so important to you that when we start talking about it in church, you, can, you tend to be personally connected to the conversation. Does that make sense? But money That should have been the first revelation right there. I, I didn't write that as 15 facts, maybe it's 16 facts. Money's not important to God. 
No, that money don't, God could care less about your money. Like, not at all. This is the, this is in thinking, okay? Because I, we value what is considered dirt in heaven. The Bible says that in heaven, that, that the, the streets are paved with silver and gold. Now, for, so, for those of you guys who, who may not understand, the dollar is worthless. The dollar is worth, it's a piece of paper. It's literally worthless. It is worthless because uh, the only reason it's worth something is because we have uh, Fort Knox. Okay? So we have reserve of gold. The American people have a reserve of gold. And what we literally do is we print enough money to relegate or to relate to the value of that gold. So every dollar you have in your pocket is a certain amount of gold. Are you with me so far? Okay, I don't want to get too deep now. You know, some of the, you can wiki any of this. <laughs> don't believe me. You can find out for yourself. Amen. The, they, that's why they can't just print as much money as they want because you got to print money relative to the gold that you have okay and so if they printed more money then it would be less valuable because we don't have enough gold to make up for the amount of money we print are y'all with me so far this all making sense to you so far okay but in heaven gold is the floor and, and you a dollar you don't have gold you have a representative of gold so it's even worth less then the actual, do you understand what I'm saying? And in a heavenly currency, gold is dirt. It's dirt. It's the lowest form of value. It's the lowest form of value. So God doesn't care about your money. God cares about your heart. But the Bible says, you, you're still with me. The Bible says where your money go, that's where your heart goes. Because men are deceitfully wicked. And so we, we, measure, we measure by treasure. Are y'all with me? The Bible says wherever your treasure goes, that's where your heart is. And we measure by treasure. Okay? I, I tell people all the time, show me your bank account. I'll tell you what you love. Show me your I'll tell you what you McDonald's, 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 McDonald's. You love McDonald's. <laughs> right? Right? Uh, some of y'all, you know, whatever your favorite thing is, tacos, tacos, because you know, you don't, you can't just have one taco place, because sometimes that taco place don't get it right, and then you got to go to the other taco place, because I, I like my bean and cheese and bacon from this place, but my carne gazadas. But you have to be able to measure, right? You got to measure your treasure. Are y'all with me? You got to measure your treasure. And where your heart goes, where your treasure goes, your heart will go. Does that make sense? Where your heart goes, your treasure will go also. And so what God is saying is he know where your heart is. You cannot say you love something that you don't give to. This is how we measure love. For God so loved that he, Janet Jackson had it right. What have you done for me? She's a prophet. <laughs> this is how we measure love. Don't tell me you love me. I, let, let, me let me say this, and it, this is going to drop like a ton of bricks, but I need you to get this. The word love is not love. I'm trying, I just helped all my daughters in here. The word love is not love. Somebody says, I love you. <laughs> That's not actually love. <laughs> you need to show me you love me. Show me the money. No, no, I'm just kidding. Show me the treasure. Amen. Because wherever your heart goes, your treasure goes. You can't love me and we Dutch at this restaurant. I said this was about money. We talked about relationships already. We Dutch in here. Oh, two, two checks, player. Two, two checks. I could have came here by myself. <laughs> All right. All right. 
Back to money. Okay, back to money. I've been talking for too long already. Okay, here we go. 15 facts about money. Y'all ready? Number one. Say number one. Money's not evil. Okay, money is not evil. Write that down. Money is not evil. Money is not evil. Boy, if one more person tell me that money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil. Money is not good or bad. It's a tool. Uh, I think that's, I'm sorry, I skipped to number two. Number two, money is a tool. Money's not evil. First Timothy, first Timothy 6 and 9, it says it like this. It says for, uh, 6 and 10. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. In fact, the real translation is all kinds of evil. All kinds of evil. When you love it, when you love money. It's see, see, when you love money, you've lost sight of things that mean something. Do you, does that make sense? When you love, because money is not a thing. It's, it's, in, it's an intangible. So when you, when you love money, you lost sight of the things that really matter. Okay? And I, my, my fear a lot of times in this generation is that we started, um, we started giving people lots of money for their ability to rhyme words, which was a weird thing to me. Like, you put two words that rhyme together, lunch and brunch, and you get a million dollars for that. Like, and what we did was we taught our kids that the money, that, like, that you didn't have to do anything, you didn't have to know anything, you didn't have to earn anything, you didn't have to work really hard to get money. I'll just give it to you. If you look a certain way, if you get a certain amount of tattoos, or you put, and then I'll just give it to you. And so we started to say, well, what do I do? When I was young, they used to say, what would you do with a million dollars? Now they ask these kids, what would you do for a million dollars? Y'all say it all on Facebook. Would you slap your mama in the middle of the mall for a million dollars? What in the world? And the truth is, whoever wrote that didn't know my mama. It could be all the money in the world. My life is valuable. <laughs> anyway, okay, the second, number two, money is a tool. Somebody say money is a tool. Money is not good or bad, it's not right or wrong, it's not evil, it's, it's not inherently evil. You get a lot of money, all of a sudden you start turning into, no, 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 that's how, not how it works. Money is a tool, it's like a hammer. If you know how to use it, it's useful. If you don't know how to use it, you might hurt yourself. Money is a tool, y'all with me? Okay, we gotta move on, we gotta go quick with these. Uh, number three, in this life, money is an answer. In this life, money is an answer. Some of y'all just got some questions, and you need some things answered. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19, you don't have to turn there like Prego. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19 says, men prepare a meal for enjoyment, and wine makes life merry, and money answers all things. It's an answer. It's an answer to a question you've been asking. Like, how am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I going to take care of my kids? How am I going to send them to college? It's an answer, okay? All right, it's not good or bad. It's an answer. But this, this, is, the, this is number four. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Say number four. But it, you can't let it be your master, okay? The Bible says this, Matthew 6 and 24. Uh, you don't have to turn there like prego is in there. Matthew 6 and 24 says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will love one and hate the other. Some of y'all have heard this before. You've heard this a million times. You thought it was talking about the devil. It wasn't. It was talking about money. It said no one can serve two masters. Either they will hate one and love the other, or they will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot love God and money. That ain't about the devil. That's about money. People used to, oh, you, you know, older folk when I was a little young whippersnapper. You can't serve two masters. You're going to have to come out them streets. No, this is not what that scripture is about. It's about the love of money. See, if you don't master money, money will master you. Okay? Okay? If you don't master money, money will master you. What, what number are we on? Number five. Money will always respond to your level of management. Money will always respond to your level of management. If you're not a good manager, you're not going to keep your money. 
It's not about it's not about getting it's not about having a good job. Hear me right here. Hear me because I've been a base and I've been a bound. I've been a base and I've been a bound. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how well you manage what you make. I know people who don't make a lot of money, but they do better than you. Not all y'all. Some of y'all rich in Jesus' name. But uh and I'm starting a new uh Bible study for uh for the rich saints, you could just, it's a $10,000 buy-in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> help. I'm sorry, Tab. I didn't mean to say that. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm leaving that. I'm leaving that subject right now because I'm going to be in trouble. Okay. Uh, money will respond to the level of your management. If you, don't, if you can't manage your money, you won't have any. Does that make sense? It'll always respond to the level of your man. If you're a good manager, you can look in your account. It'll reflect the fact that you're a good manager. Does that make sense? Okay, what number we on? Everything that's pretty is not profitable. Okay, okay. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12 says it like this. It says, uh, everything is permissible, but not all things are profitable. Everything's permissible. People always asking me, can I do this now that I'm saved? Can I do that now that I'm saved? Now? The truth is, everything's permissible. Well, it might not be profitable because you're going to reap whatever you sow. But that's true about your money too. It might not be profitable. Are y'all with me today? Does that make sense? So, so I only want to do, see, some, some things are bad investments. Okay? I only want to do things that are good investments for me. If it, you need to start thinking about your life in relationship to ROI, return on investment, okay? I want you to understand this because when you go to work, understand this, that you, you, you're not just going to work. See, they don't give us paychecks anymore. You get direct deposit. So you've somehow mentally disconnected your work from your pay. But you don't understand that when you go to work, it's just an exchange. You work for an hour, they give you a certain amount of dollars. It's an exchange. If you're not happy, you need a greater level of exchange. But the truth is, it's based on market value. Oh, I can deal with this. Because you're going to have to up your market value if you want a greater level of exchange. Does that make sense? If they can get a monkey to do what you do, then they're going to pay you the least amount that they can legally pay you to do it. Are y'all with me? So when you, when you up your skill level, hear me right here. I want, I'm trying to help. I'm, I don't mean to be disrespectful at all. I'm trying to help you. If you want a greater level of exchange, you got to up your skill levels. Okay? You got to grow in your skill level. That means you need to spend less time playing Xbox, man, and more time. See, because they don't pay you to do that. You so good on 2K. People be like, PD, I'm going to whoop you in 2K. Man, you 27. What are you talking about? <laughs> Why are we in a competition? You know what we playing 2K for. You need to be increasing your skills. I'm not, I'm trying to help you here. Because if I don't teach y'all this, then we'll. Uh, okay. I don't want to pastor a broke church. That's just, we're not a broke church. Just hit me right. Look around. We're not a broke church, but I don't want us to be. Does that make sense? Okay. Does that make sense? All right. All right. Are y'all still with me? What number we on? I just need to say six again. Just because it's pretty don't mean it's profitable. Do things that are profitable. Some people, uh, some people are good investors because they're your friend, but they're bad investments. So, of course, they want to be your friend. You're a good investment. Everybody who wants to be your friend is not qualified to be your friend. They're not all good investments. This is the world we live in, where you get to be my friend just by clicking a button. No, you got you, you to gotta be this tall to ride this ride. You got to... There's requirements. Just because you're pretty don't mean you're profitable, boo-boo. Okay. All right. Come on. I'm trying to help somebody. Some of y'all later on asked me why he did that. Okay. Uh, 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 
This is not specifically about money. This is about you. What number are we on? Learn how to count. Learn how to count. Learn how to count. Learn how. This is, I charge this to all, my, all, these, all the people in this room. Learn how to count. PD, I do know how to count. Okay. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 2. Finally, my brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that this trying of your faith is working patience. So let patience have her perfect word, that ye may be perfect and entire, needing nothing. If I learn how to count, then I realize I don't need. Oh, man. If I learn how to count, then I don't need. For my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And the reason you feel like you need, need, need is because you lost count. Wake up in the morning, count your blessings. Oh, God woke me up this morning. Stop right there, number one. Oh. My legs still work, my arms still work. I can see I still got some of my mind. I don't got it all, but I got a little bit of my mind. I got a little bit of health and strength. My back hurt. That means it still work. I got a little bit of pain. All pain is, is, oh, hear me right here. All pain is, is an indicator that that thing still works. When it don't hurt no more, it probably won't work no more. Learn how to count. Let patience have her perfect work. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God for that. Let him ask God for that. Let him ask God for that. Stop asking God for stuff. Ask God for wisdom. If you, if you ask God for wisdom, you'll have the wisdom to get stuff. Oh, Jesus. Abraham told God, I, I don't want your hand. I want your face. Seek his hand, get his hand. Right? Seek his hand, get his hand. Seek his face, get his hand, get his mind, get his thoughts, get his ways, get it. All right, all right, all right, all right. If any of you like wisdom, let him ask God. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, mother. <laughs> let him ask God. That give it to all men liber liber li liberally. Liberally. Liberal. Three. Trey, is that it? Three? Liberally, I'm okay. And upbraided. Boy, King James trying to get me. To, they're trying to trip me up today. And upbraided. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Okay. That give it to all men liberally and, and upbraided not. And it shall be given unto him. Let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of sea driven back and forth. You back and forth, vacillating about everything. Back and forth. New job, new, new boyfriend, new girlfriend. You're always going back. And forth. If you seek God for wisdom, so you can stop vacillating. Okay? And then eight. And, oh, man. Seven. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. The man who vacillates. Because number eight. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You can't be double-minded and be a rich person. That doesn't work. You, you, you can't be. Some of y'all. Uh, I want to talk to my young entrepreneurs right now. Stick to something. Just work that thing. Stop trying to do everything. Oh, I rap, I produce, I make t-shirts, I write so I do. Do you do everything? Calm, just calm down. Pick one thing, stop vacillating. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Just because you're good at everything, just because it's all pretty don't mean it's all profitable. Figure it out, okay? Go to, go to school. Stop changing your major. Ooh, look, it got quiet! What's your major? Underwater basket weaving? Why? Because it's fast. 
Whatever way they give me the degree, the fastest way, that's the degree I want. No, 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 no. Get in some class where you can learn something so you can focus on something. We don't pay doctors uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars because, because they're smart. We pay them because they focused for eight years. They focused. They fo And we assume because you focused for eight years that you know enough to tell me why my neck hurt. You focused for eight years. They're not smarter than you. They focused. Focus. Oh, hear me right here. And I, not, not, Lord Jesus, um, my time's about to be up. This clock is wrong. Oh, no, I know where. Okay, okay, okay. No, it's not. Okay. All right. I'm right. All right. Okay. All right. I'm tripping. Sorry. I thought that said a different time. <laughs> they, they like, no, it's working. Okay. What was I going to say? God. Oh, no disrespect to any other ethnicity in this building. Black people. Focus. Jesus Christ. Focus. Do one thing. Do it good. Put all your heart. The Bible says whatever thy hands find to do it. Do it with all thy might. Focus. One of y'all, one more person, tell me about a DBA they went to get. Oh, I'm doing, doing business as. I'm not going to say any names because then I'll mess up. And He was talking about me. Focus. If you cook, cook. 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 Don't rap. Cook. <laughs> cook. Oh, I rap too. I'm sorry, man. Everybody raps. Everybody rap. Come on, man. Come on. I, I told my, um, now I feel like an old man now. I was walking with my son in the mall, me and, uh, me and my youngest son. And I looked, we just, look, I'm just looking over at him. I said, ask him, do he rap? <laughs> no, dad, I'm not going to ask him. I said, ask him, do he rap? <laughs> no, dad, I'm not going to ask him. This person work at the store we in. He worked there. I just say, yo, yo, player man, you rap? Oh yeah, dog. I'm... Manage this store. Own you one. It's a franchise. Stop trying to rhyme words for a living. Focus on something. Jesus. At least make the music. So that, that requires a skill level. Uh, uh, okay, all right, all right. I'm just going to start asking every black young man that I know between the ages of 16 and 20. Is it, no, 16 and 30. 16 and 40. I'm just going to be like, yo, you rap man? Yo, you come here. Yo, you rap man? He's going to be like, uh, yo, yo. Come on, man. Come on, man. Finish school, man. Okay? I'm not, I'm cool rap, rapping uh, ciphers on the side, whatever. But don't, dude, come on, man. Get your life. Okay? This young lady's out here trying with master's degrees. She waiting on you to grow up, man. You out here trying to get her to listen to your demo. Y'all gonna build a life together. Grow up, man. Double-minded in all your ways. What number we on? Y'all lost count. Okay, here we go. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna go real fast. I'm gonna go real fast. Number eight: seek godly counsel. Seek godly counsel. No, Th that was verse eight to James chapter one. That's what y'all thinking about. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That was verse 8. I read James chapter 1 verses 2 through 8. That was still in learn how to count. Before you learn how to rap, learn how to count. Okay? All right. All right. Now, all other ethnicities, welcome back to the conversation. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's just, I don't know what it is, man. It's, I blame Langston Hughes or somebody. It's just... It's got to be something. 
Okay, all right. I, that was a joke. I wasn't disrespecting our forefathers. It was a joke, okay? Can you take a joke? All right, so <laughs> number eight. Y'all with me still? Seek godly counsel. If you have money and no mentor, you're not going to have money for long. If you have money and no mentorship, you're not going to have money for long. You need somebody to help you. You need somebody that's been through what you've been through. You need somebody that's seen. That's, hear, hear me right here. I think part of the reason that Moses died in the wilderness is because he had never seen the promised land. See, Joshua had seen the promised land. He went as a spy to the promised land. So he had seen it. So the reason he was qualified to get people over is because he had been there himself. Moses only knew the wilderness. He spent 40 years in the wilderness. Does that make sense? Because he only knew the wilderness. You need somebody who's been where you're trying to go. Okay? You don't just need a mentor for, uh, for your job or your career. You need a money mentor. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. Uh, Psalms 1 and 3 says it like this. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the wicked. Okay, that means around people who... W wicked don't mean what you... It, it doesn't mean w wicked like a... It, it does, but get this. Wicked just means the opposite of good. Don't, don't walk with people who've done, who are doing the opposite of where you're trying to go. Does that make sense? Unrighteousness is the opposite of righteousness. Okay, so the opposite of rich. So don't get counsel from people who are the opposite of where you're trying to go. Does that make sense? Okay, not, not necessarily your counsel of the wicked, but the, the opposite of where you're trying to go. Because number nine, you can't have financial stability if you have mental and spiritual instability. Okay, this is back to what we were talking about, and that's what a mentor will do. They will help you d define if, you, if you're on the right track. They will encourage you. Yeah, go forward, or no, don't do that. Or, hey, focus, okay? Uh, Psalms 1, uh, this is still verse 1 through 3. It says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. A fruitful man is, is, is a planted man. A fruitful man is a planted man. Hear me right here. Tell me, oh, oh, Jesus. I love you. I care about you. If I only see you once or twice every two months, you're not growing. I don't, you, you can tell me whatever you want. You're, you, you're in the same existence, okay? You got to be planted. You got to be in the same place because God is trying to do something to you, say something to you, and it's going to take more than a day uh, out, of, uh, out of 30 <laughs> to get that right. Are y'all with me? Okay, all right, all right. Some of y'all thinking, y'all stop shouting. You start thinking, huh? Is he talking about me? Okay, th this, number 10, I need you to get this. I need everybody to get this because it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, uh, 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 above or below, whatever it is. Listen, fruit is seasonal. There's always going to be times when, you, when, when it's tight. I don't care how much money you make. It's some people in here who make good money, but they have some tight times. You know, some people be like, Dante, can I borrow this? No, it's tight. It's tight right now. Oh, no, you got money. Usually. <laughs> it's tight right now. Does that make sense? Fruit is seasonal. And so what I have to be able to do is survive. a good farmer puts back enough fruit. He don't sell it all. Oh, hear me right here. He don't sell it all. He put back enough fruit so that when there's no harvest, his family can still eat. Ding dong, I'm in your neighborhood. Ding dong, I'm in your neighborhood. You're like, oh, I got a bonus check. That means we could wow. No. Fruit is seasonal. I'm going to put some of this to the center. I'm going to wow with some of it because YOLO. Because <laughs> you only live once. But I'm going I'm to I'm make sure that I put something to the side, okay? Fruit is seasonal. Does that make sense? Are y'all with me still? Okay. Uh, uh, um, I got to skip this. I have notes for this. I'll send it out later. I always say that, right? Uh, number 11. 
I need you to understand this. God has a plan for you to prosper. God has a plan for you to prosper. He said, I would that you would prosper like your soul prospers. I don't want your soul to be heavenly and your, your finances to be hellish. God has a plan for you to prosper. God cares. He wants you to do well. He said, I would that you would do well and prosper. Live well and prosper. Amen. Live, live long. Is this how I go? No, my fingers don't work like that. I'm from the hood. You know, you, everything when you're from the hood, like everything is, I'm from the hood. Okay, no, that don't work. Okay, I, some of y'all like live longer. What is he talking about? It's okay. It's too, it's anachronistic. It's not for this time. Okay, y'all with me still? What number we on? All right. The tithe is a faith step. The tithe is a faith step. Step, not a plan for the preacher to get rich. The tithe is a faith step, not a plan for the teacher to the preacher to get rich. Are y'all with me? Okay, when you tithe, it don't have nothing to do with me. If you think about me when you tithe, keep your money. If you think about what I drive, what I wear, if, it's, if it becomes a hindrance to you when you tithe, keep your money. Because you're not doing it with a cheerful heart anyway. And you're not going to reap the results of Malachi 3 that says he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. You got to understand so it's not about me. It's not about this church. It's not about these people. What you do is unto God. What you do is unto God. You shouldn't even think about this building. Think about nothing in it except maybe our mission. To try to get to evacuate hell and to overflow heaven, you probably oh I'm a part of this mission. But other than that, if you think about anybody at this building when you tithe, you missed the mark. You missed the point. Does that make sense? It's a faith step for you. It's not about us. It's not about me. Not at all. Trust me. I built this church with my hands. I counted sixty nine dollar tithe. I I counted offerings of sixty nine dollars. When you've been preaching for a year and you take up $69 in the offering, you just want to quit. <laughs> like, I'm not doing, I'm not good at this. I'm not good, I'm doing something wrong. Me, me and uh, my, me and my compadre, we was counting that money. I started flipping it over like Bernie Mac. I was like, we're doing something wrong here. I turned it upside down. Wait, okay, 220s. But I'm just letting you know, we've prospered as a church. We've never missed a rent payment or never missed an electricity. Oh, Jesus. Never missed an electricity bill, never missed anything. We keep going higher and higher. We moved from the main event to the George Gervin to Walsham. Now over here to 10,000 square feet. We, ooh, ooh. And for some people, we did that despite how you felt about it. This is not some petty stuff. I'm trying to help you right here. If, when, God, when God say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can. Okay. All right. Y'all with me still? Okay. See, you got to understand that faith without works is dead. You can't say you love God and don't apply faith to that conversation. Love is just a verb. It's just a verb. It's just a verb. Until you do something. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Kendrick Lamar lied to y'all. Love is just a verb until you do something. Okay? Are y'all with me? All right. Um, you, you can't have credibility without accountability. This is still part of number 12. You can't have credibility without accountability. If you're not accountable with your money, you're not going to have credit in the kingdom of heaven. That's just not how it works. Can't have credibility, but accountability. Okay, number 13. Finance requires focus. Finance requires focus. I think I already spoke about this. <laughs> finance requires focus. If I'm going to be financially um, safe, then I'm going to have to focus. Okay? I can't, just, I can't just, I need to know where my money's going. Okay? Okay? Does that make sense? You need to know where your money's going. Okay? St uh, yeah. Stop focusing on your finances. Give your finances a focus. Point them towards something. Okay? I'm working on something. 
Some of y'all, you know, you're trying to start a business or something. You need a finance, you need a separate bank account with the card that you don't carry in your pocket. <laughs> Ooh, that, I just helped you right there. Don't carry that card. Okay? All right. Number 14. Make a plan to repay every man. Romans 13, 8 says, for you to owe nothing to no man but love. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I don't owe nothing to no man but love. Make a plan to repay every man as best you can. Try to repay all your debts. The reason a lot of us have financial problems is because we owe. And we don't realize that there's more going out than coming in because you owe so much. Because you bought something you couldn't afford. Well, some of y'all, you could afford it, but you just put it on the credit card anyway. And now you owe. You don't know why you owe $6,000 to You don't know what's on that. You ain't never had, had $6,000 in your hand all at once, ever. But for some reason, you still owe Capital One. You're like, what did I even buy? Okay. All right. Are y'all with me? And then 15, prioritize your passions. This is back to that same thing. Prioritize your passions. You got to say, okay, I'm passionate about this thing, but I need to prioritize. I need to prioritize. I need to prioritize. I'm passionate about a, a whole bunch of things, but I needed to prioritize. When I, was, uh, when I was getting out of the Army, we had Dominique. Some of y'all know the story or whatever. We was already we was high school sweethearts, but, you know, stuff happens. And we had our son. I was a senior in high school with a baby. It was the craziest thing in the world because, uh, well, anyway, <laughs> the teachers would like champion this. They would call me daddy. That's not cute. I'm 17. You shouldn't be celebrating this. Anyway, I got offered a scholarship to Howard University. The beginnings of a scholarship. I didn't even get that far down the line, but I got offered the beginnings of a scholarship at Howard University for vocal. But it, it wasn't no pampers involved. <laughs> like they were in, there wasn't no infamil in that scholarship paperwork. It was no nothing. They wasn't, you know, it wasn't no, nothing in that paperwork that would help me feed and clothe that little boy. So I had to, I had to, listen, I had to prioritize my passions. I had to prioritize my passions. So I went into the military to take care of my son. And now look, here we are. 22 years later, and I get to sing a song I wrote to y'all. I prioritize my passions. Now the album that I wanted to, that I thought I was good at at 17 years old, now I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna get Steve Collins to help me write this album. We go, look, he's standing back there. He's not paying attention. That's okay. <laughs> No, and KC and all, Niles, we're going we gonna to make an album. It's going to be great. It's going to be way better than my little, <laughs> than my little album was going to be when I was 17. I prioritize my passions. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. So we got a little bit of time. <laughs> so we're going to turn it over to somebody. Who are, you? are you over here? Okay, there we go. You shook your head no. That means no. She was like, no, we don't have no time, PD. Uh, we, gonna, we got a little bit of time. If you have questions about money, particularly, like I said, I'm not an expert in money by any means. I've I, I done some stuff. I've been a base and I've been a bound. I, I have a, in my personal life, before I started this church, y'all know, y'all know, before I started this church, the car I have now, okay, I went and bought that car. Not, not that one, because that's the upgrade of the one I had, okay? Before we started this church, I told my wife, I said, we got we to gotta buy a car. Because if we start a church and then buy a car, people will think we got the car because of the church. We have, now, the car I have right now is the same car, type of car, I had when we started this church because I, I needed people to have the, a clear understanding about what God was doing in my personal life 
and, and disconnected from what God was doing in my spiritual life and disconnected from your relationship with God in relation to the tithe or whatever. Does that make sense? So, I, so, so yeah, we've done some things personally that are wonderful. Um, some people don't know this, but we own property. We, own, we have a fourplex. We own it. We have another house in Converse. We own that. We rent these spaces, these spaces out. God has been good to us. We've done a couple of things. I'm not trying to brag. I'm trying to give you some idea of if you have a question to ask, uh, you can ask me and I will tell you how I did it because I don't, I don't have no secrets from nobody. I want us all to win. Amen? Amen. Um, okay. So we're going to start over here and then we'll go wherever y'all trying to tell me with this message right now. All right. Sorry, they just flashed the TV and I'm trying to pay attention. Okay. <laughs> I told you I'm easily distracted. Okay, so anything that has to do... Church finances, biblical finances, wonderful. We could talk about that. Um, whatever you want to talk about, okay? I don't know everything, but if I don't know, I don't know. I'm not supposed to read this. They're supposed to read it to me. They know what they did. They got a whole thing. Hello. So we're going to start off with a Facebook question. Hello, LT. Hello, guys. I'm back here. Sorry. But okay, so here we go. We have a question from Crystal Alexander. And she says, how can we balance the desire to have more success slash money and also living with your means and being grateful for what you have? For instance, like being a good steward and also wanting to love your best life. Right. Beautiful. Amen. I, I think I think that's the whole game, right? That's the whole game. You know, so, PD, what's the key to life? Well, that's it. You have to prioritize it. You got to prioritize, and you got to start thinking about what you want. Some again, some some of us, we're, we're you 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 far up in age. You need to stop thinking about what you have and start thinking about what you want. You need to stop thinking about what'll make you happy tonight and start you and start thinking about the next 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, especially if you're in your 30s. You need to start thinking about that stuff, man. You need to start thinking about that stuff. So you can do you can do whatever you want. Uh, hear me right here. You can live your best life right now, but you need to start thinking about your future. I'll add this to it. Not even put this in my 15 things, but some of y'all you need life insurance. Start right there. At least at least if you're going to live your best life, don't let us have to bury you. I live my best life, and now I can't afford the casket. My, like, I can't. I, we got to put you in a little wooden. I'm being serious. We bury people, okay? But you got to consider. You have to balance. I, 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 I don't think I'm answering that question properly, but the answer is, you have to balance it. How do I balance it? By balancing it. You have to balance it. You have to think about what, what this, everything costs more than it costs. Are y'all with me? Just because it costs $30 today, what does it cost in your future? What does it cost? It, it, it might cost $100 today, but what does it cost into your future? So you have to start balancing those things. If you want something in your future, you're going to have to make some decisions now. We talked about this at the team camp just the other day. If you got to start making decisions now. I don't care if you're 12, 13, 14, 15. You got to start making decisions now about who you want to be, what you want to be, and how you plan to get there. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's just about it's, start. Whatever it is, just start right now. If you want to live your best life, amen, create you a little best life fund. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit over here. Some of, y some, some of y'all, um, we, we used to do 80-10-10, uh, uh, okay? We would do 80-10-10. So we would, we would take our finances, and we would take 80%, and that's what we're going to pay our bills with. No matter what, we're only going to pay our bills with 80%. We're going to put 10% in our savings, and we're going to tithe our 10%. Okay? Not in that order. <laughs> Y'all so spiritual. No, seriously. So we give our first fruit, we give our tithe, that's 10%. We take another 10%, we put it in our pocket. This is our best life fund. Okay? All right? We put it up, we put it somewhere, and then we pay our bills with the rest of it. Okay? So you got to start thinking like that. Amen. But you got to start thinking long term 
if you're going to do this now. You can't, you can't just be thinking about, oh, I want to enjoy tonight. Okay? Bottles. Don't we get bottles? Anyway, okay. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get started with asking questions from the audience. So if you do have a question, please raise your hand, and I will try my best to get over to you. We will start with, you want to just stand up for me, please? Ebony. Look, y'all, I was at a wedding yesterday, and Ebony was the, she was the maid, she was one of the maids of honor, but, uh, but all of a sudden, she started singing, and I forgot she could sing. I was like, oh, who is this right here in this alto? <laughs> we need to get her on the stage. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. All right, come on. <laughs> all right, sorry, sorry. Don't I got, do me, Pete. Told you I'll okay. get sidetracked. Um. So my name is Ebony, and I just have a quick question, Pity. Okay, I, I'll be the first to admit that I have not always been faithful in tithing because I really never understood what tithing was. I just heard my mother say that tithing was something that we were supposed to do as giving the 10% um, of our earnings to God and that it should always be our first fruit that we should give. Yeah. But my question is this. Considering the fact that I haven't always been um, faithful in my tithing in my personal life, I do want to get stronger in that. But then what has been conflicting me is the fact that I have started a business. And what my question is is I know I'm supposed to give 10% out of my personal but am I supposed to be given 10% out of my business as well or does my personal cover that everybody yeah, but I know the answer to this what's the answer to that okay I, I would say they're wrong here's the answer to this if you want your business to be blessed yes if you don't care if you just want to roll the dice do what you want to do see Tithing is not a law. It's not like thou shalt not. It's a, it's a recommendation. God said, bring the tithe to the storehouse so there shall be meat in my house. It's the only thing, it's the only place, two things that God never does. Two things that God never does. He never allows you to test him. If you stand on top of a mountain, you say, God, if you real, I'm going to jump off this mountain and catch me. You will see God that day, but not because he caught you. God don't allow you to test him. And God doesn't allow you to negotiate. When God makes up his mind, he does not negotiate. It's not negotiable. When God, whatever God said, that's, it's, that's it. It's, it's in stone. But when it comes to your, your, your money, that's the only place in the Bible, Malachi chapter 3. It says, bring all the tithes to the storehouse so there will be meat in my house. He says, if you do this, if you do this, I'll open up a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive. Boy, I could just go, I could just dig in that. I could just dig in that right there because sometimes the blessing that he'll pour you out, will la it'll reverberate throughout the years. It won't just be one blessing. It'll, he'll teach you something. Somebody taught me something in a Tiger Direct magazine about computers and hard drives and RAM and memory, and this lasted my whole life. One conversation. It blew my, it changed the trajectory of my family. One conversation, that's what he means when he says, I'll pour you out a blessing. One conversation changed my whole family's trajectory and where we were going. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so, so this is what the tithe is for. Then he says this, he says, test me by this. And see when I, when I open up a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And rebuke the devourer from your, for your sake. What's the devourer? See, you got to read your Bible, man. The devourer is this. Okay, okay. When, my, we bought, we, when in 2004, we bought my wife a, uh, a small a Kia uh, Spectrum. No power, nothing. We had to... We had to, oh, we gave it to you, right? You had, that was your ride. Yeah. In 2004, it was, it was, it was tough. We had to make some financial decisions. We had to move some stuff around, shift some stuff. It didn't have no electric, no power, nothing. You had to like roll. All that. We bought it in 2004. It lasted till 2016. All we did was change the oil. He rebukes the devourer. He rebukes the devourer. Some of y'all, my car always broke. My, we had a washing machine. You bought a washing machine, 2001 or something like that. 
It lasts till 2009. Nothing ever happened to it. You have to just give it away. She used to just, I used to be praying over those washing machines like, Lord, keep it. I know my wife, she she wanted the new new. They was coming out with the new new every year. They was coming out with the new new. I was in my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. Eventually, she just said, I just want a new washer. Like, I can't, you, I can't wait till it breaks. <laughs> it wasn't going to break. It would never have broken. <laughs> That's how my prayer life is. It would have been it. Never have broken. You know what I mean? That, this is what God will do. He will rebuke the devourer for your sake. But it, 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 So this is what the tithe is about. And I do think that uh, your business... Th- to be clear, when you set up a business, you set up a different entity. <laughs> I want to protect my entity, which is my family. I want to protect this other entity, too, from the devourer. Amen? Does that make sense? From employees quitting all the time, and I got to train a new employee, and I got to do all this other stuff. I want to protect my entity from the devourer. So, yes, 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 yes. Okay, next question. Question is from, state your name, please. Candace. Hey, Candace. Um, okay. Um, so I'm the oldest um, of, there's a few of us, and um, I'm, I'm kind of used to kind of fending for myself. Mm-hmm. And I think I got so used to it that now I'm in a place where my family kind of looks to me mm-hmm. and I've never been there like that. And so now I'm starting to feel guilty because now they're, they're coming to me and they're feeling a little resentful towards me um, when it comes to finances. So I never included them whenever I started living my best life. Amen. I, never, I never thought of them because they, <laughs> I mean, so uh, now I'm in a place where I really want to work on being a better Christian. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like I've, I've been selfish so long that I don't, I don't really feel like I have it for them. I don't, I'm like, I don't, I'm not there yet. You, I still can't help you. Sorry. Okay. You know what I mean? So now, do you have any words of advice, uh, some godly advice as it pertains to um, finances yeah. when it comes yeah. to trying to help out somebody that needs $20 all the time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a, cu- a couple of things. And I'll, I'll try to answer this really quickly and, and, and tell you how I think about it. First, time, first thing is that it's not a personal problem. It's a math problem. Okay? If you don't have it, you can't give it. It's not a personal problem. It's a math problem. Okay? You, you, X is what you have. <laughs> Okay. D is what they need. <laughs> and if what you have doesn't pay all your bills, then you can't subtract D from X. Does that make sense? Okay? So it's just a simple math problem. Uh, if you do have it, though, then you have to consider this, that you are a farmer and that your money is seed. You need to be really smart about where you sow your seed. Some people, some people in your life, again, some, you got to consider whether this is an investment or a gift because some people, you're going to give them something and that, you'll never see it again. And, that, and I say, I, 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 um, I'll be careful here because I, I love my family. I care about my family. They can have whatever I got. You know, you know what I mean? But to a, to a limit, to a certain extent, right? Okay. But from that perspective, I got to be able to say, okay, if I lose this and I never get it back, will I be hurt? And if that's the case, like if you say, I give this away and I never get it back, then I'll be hurt, then you can't give it away. That per- that's not a good investment. That's not a good, okay? So you need to know the difference between lending and giving. Some people say that they're borrowing, but they're not borrowing. You just give it. That's it. You know what I mean? So you need to make some choices about that. Some people are good investments. Some people are not good investments. And sometimes, sometimes, um, 
This is going to sound super harsh. Lord, help me, Jesus. Sometimes when I do give it, I'm giving it with the understanding that this is the last time. And I, I'm clear about it. Okay, um, here's, I, and I never give it all. I, I learned this from a wise man. He said, don't, you, he said, you make people into, um, I, I won't say that. He said, you make yourself a sole resource for people. Don't do that. He said, if they need 300, give them 150. They got to figure out how to get the other 150. They got to go to somebody else. Gotta, Here's my part. This is what I got to give. Okay, I can't give it all to you because now I'm a soul. And now every time you need a loan, you come back to me because I'm a soul lender. You got to spread it out. Even banks will tell you, okay, we'll go in half on a, this business venture with you. If you can find another bank, that'll go in half. So it's, it's something like that. And then, you, and, then you, and then when I give it, I'll just say, hey, hey, this is all I got. Yeah. And when I say this, I mean forever. <laughs> I might not say forever, but in my heart, they know what I, this is all I got. Chris, this is all I got. And then, thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. And then they, and if they give it back to you, then, oh, yeah, we can work because you, I know you're a good book. You'll pay me back. Do you see what I'm saying? So you, it's just about you got to make some decisions. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody else? I think we could take one or two more. Devin Alexander. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, man? I'm asking for a friend. Come on. Uh, man. <laughs> uh, I have a friend of mine. Uh, who is pretty well off, um, and he has a problem. Do we go here? Oh, he no, does I'm not saying, go here. I'm He's saying. been here before, though. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has a problem. Well, his wife has a problem because she says that he gives graciously. Some sometimes he can give too much, and he's like, "Well, we're well off, so what is too much to give?" That's a good question. I can't answer that because I'm not that well off. No, I'm just kidding. No, but hear, hear me right here. I bet the reason he's well off is because he's generous. I bet. I bet. And, and you, it's far, far, you know, far be it. I, I don't want to generalize, but it's hard for a stingy person to get rich. It's really difficult for a stingy person to get rich. It's easier for a generous person to get rich. Because a lot of times when you're generous, that money finds you. It just finds its way to you. When, when you only focus on money, money runs from you. When you chase money, money runs from you. When you chase God, money will chase you. When you chase generosity, the, 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 this is not an accident. The richest people in the world are always the most generous giving people in the world. It's not an accident. Unless they are a prince or something and they inherited it, the richest, even Bill and Melinda Gates, they stopped taking a salary from Microsoft years and years and years ago. And they still are in the top five richest people in the world. And it's because they are in the top five most giving people in the world. They build schools and they build churches. They build the facilities and they, they build up neighborhoods in, in, in places where you'll never visit because they're so generous. And a lot of times it is your generosity that'll get you to that place. Generous people, I'm telling you, something about generous people, it, money is attracted to generosity. So uh, oftentimes, if he stopped giving on that level, he wouldn't be as well off as you said he would. So I, I let him live. Let him live. He did something right here. He, and, I, and I'm pretty sure he's still counting them coins. He's being generous, but he's still counting them coins. And the truth is, whatever I sow, I reap. So I reap, man. So what you think is given in his mind is it's sowing. And I just, I, I'm a sower. 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 And when you start looking at, you know, at the end of the year or whatever, you know, when you look at your taxes, you know you get to write off everything you gave right? You get to say, don't tax me for this. Everything I gave. You should be looking at that number and saying, okay, guys, the, it, 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 the, the IRS will pay you back money because you gave money. And they'll give you back money because you gave money. Does that make sense? Because you made your income non-taxable. 
because of how much you get. So it, it, your, what I'm trying to say is the, the whole world is set up to reward generosity. The entire world is set up to reward generosity. Okay? All right. Oh, there off. we they go. They turned you off, LT. All right. Don't turn me off. Uh, okay, so we went out into the city again, and we wanted to see what the city of San Antonio said. So if you guys can turn your attention to the screens, we have a nice little video. Um, asking for a friend, what is tithing, and why is it important? Oh, how he do that? That brother was talking and not moving his <laughs> Man, woo, Jesus, I need to be asking for a friend to him. How you do that? Okay, uh, I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> I was just looking at his mouth. It wasn't moving. Can we play that one more time, please? I'm sorry. I'm so lost. What did he even ask? I have no idea. Um, asking for a friend, what is tithing and why is it important? Okay, all right. What is tithing and why is it important? We talked about this just a little bit, but tithing literally, so, so this, is, this, is, this is God. Tithing is God's plan to have a church that is on God's mission, okay? Tithing is God's plan to have a church that's on his mission, okay? Really, I want to be, be clear about something. Tithing is not about you at all. It's not about you, but it will bless you if you know how to do it but it's not about you it's about the mission of the church he said bring the tithe to the storehouse so that there will be meat in my house see somebody needs this more than you do and when you tithe you're tithing into the fact that we are again evacuating hell so you're tithing so that's what the tithe is it really has nothing to do with you specifically it has to do with meat in God's house you want to make sure that when people come to God's house that they have lights and screens and, and, and whatever, I mean, whatever they need, air conditioning, all that stuff. You, you, you want to make sure that, they, that that's in God's house. And so God says, now this is the negotiation. If you take care of my house, I take care of your house. This is what we'll do. It's the, it's the beautiful exchange. You take care of my house and I'll take care of your house. Okay, does that make sense? And now you got to trust me to take care of your house. But when you take care of my house, you, you trust me to take care of your house. That's a step in faith, and I'll reward that faith. Does that make sense? Does that answer that question? Do, does any, is anybody confused about the tithe? We could really go back to Leviticus. The Bible talks about that it, it, whatever you had, bring one-tenth of it to the church so that God could start to build the church. So this is happening after... Um, Exodus, the people of God left uh, slavery in Egypt. Are y'all with me? And so God says, well, I need y'all to start to build a tabernacle, start to build the church up. And this is how they built the church up, with, with one-tenth of everything that you had. And the Bible says, if you, had one ten, if you had ten goats, bring me one. If you had, now, I can, I can really get deep on this, but I, I'll be, I'll, this is maybe a whole other Bible study. But you need to understand that what you are doing is a priestly exchange. See, you are a priest. Does that make sense? You are a priest. And what you do as the priest of your house is you bring your tithe to the priest of this church. And then I turn it over to the high priest. And all through that process is anointing. Okay? So you, you are a priest. You, you, by bringing that tithe to the storehouse, you are anointing the rest of your house. When you bring it to me, I give it to God, and I'm anointing his house, okay? And I turn it over to the high priest, so it's from priest to priest to priest, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. It's, for, it's a spiritual thing that's happening. It's a spiritual exchange. And what you're doing is you're anointing the 90. If you give the 10, you anoint the 90. We, talk, we taught a series not too long ago, but we talked about this. Nachos, okay? 90, yos. 10, nachos, <laughs> okay? Surrender that cheese to who it belongs to. 
Jesus said, give, that, give, give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give unto God what belongs to God. Okay, so that's what the tithe is about. We, we can get deeper, but that, I think that's as deep as I want to go on that subject right now because some people start itching when you start talking about tithing in church. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, yeah, we can do. Yeah. What's up, D? What's up, Pastor? How you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm Derek Wilson. Um, actually, my question is actually in specifics to what you just talked about. Um, I've always consistently had a problem with churches kind of putting an onus on tithing. So if you know me, you know that I'm not very well versed in reference to the Bible and the, ver the, 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 the literature that speaks to tithing. Sure. So what I would like for you to do is explain to me in specifics in reference to literature and as well as um, specifics. Like, does it just mean material assets, money? Does it mean time? Does it mean effort? Does it mean anything in reference yeah. to that? Yeah. That's what I'm asking. That's a good question. So, so it's a good question, but it's a cheating question. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if your job tried to pay you in time <laughs> and, and, tr and assets, you, know, you, you would say, a good, okay. Okay, you're talking about PTO? How do they pay you in time? They can't give you time. Okay, no, no, but hear me right here. They, that's your time. Comp time is your time. That's time that they give you money. They give you money for time that you didn't work. They didn't give you time because they don't have time to give you. Does that make sense? I, it, no, no, no. Come say, with it, me. Say, say, it, say it to me again. Come with me I'll, for a second. I'll... Comp time is not time. It's money for time that you don't have to work. Does that make sense? It's, so they're not giving you time. Nobody could give you time. That, that's, that's against all laws of relativity. Nobody can give you time. Okay? So, so what I'm saying is, in some sense or another, when we say, oh, well, can we give time? Can we give clothes? Can we give? Sure, you can give those things, but is that your treasure? See, what God is saying is that you have treasure to offer. And I need to know where your heart is. It doesn't have anything to do with your money because at the beginning of this thing, I broke it up. It's not about your money. God doesn't need your money. What God is saying, though, and this is, we can talk, um, Malachi 3, if you, the real literature, Malachi 3, Leviticus chapter 10, I think, but I, I can text you. So we're going to talk about this. Okay, Leviticus chapter 10, Malachi 3, God is, God is explaining a process. What he's saying to you is that it, 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 I, I need you to understand something. You care too much about natural things. You care too much, and I want to show you that you care too much about natural things. I want to give you a picture that you care. For some of us, when, when you... <laughs> When you first start tithing, and some of you have experienced this lately, when you first start tithing and you, and you, and you know you, get, you made $200 and you give 20 that's hard. That's hard. You made $200. You go, oh, I got to give 20 That's hard. That's when you make $1,000, you got to give 100 <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Hard. When you make $2,000 and you got to give 200 Woo. This when you that's when you start questioning what they're doing with the money. What they, what they doing with that money. Two hundred dollars last month. You make five thousand. You gotta give five hundred. You make ten thousand. You gotta give a thousand. And some of us will never make that money because of how we feel about that. As I went up, you got sick. You care too much about things that God says doesn't matter. And what he's trying to do is prove that out. But since God is God, he can do it in so, he, 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 can, he can build a church and prove to you that you care still too much, that you got two masters. He can, and, and this is what he's doing. This is the design. I'm trying to prove to you that you got too many masters. 
you still only care about what you have, about what you, and the truth of the matter is, whatever you have, I gave you. And so if you can't trust me with what I gave Hello. <laughs> if you can't trust me with what I gave you, why would I trust you <laughs> with what I gave you? Why would I keep giving to you? If you can't trust me. So it's a spiritual aspect to it. And a lot of times, the reason... Now, this is why it's messed up for us. Oh, Jesus. I didn't plan on talking about tithe this whole time. I thought y'all was going to be asking about stocks. and I should have known. Um, the, the reason it matters to us is because of, who we, of whose hand we put it in. Okay? The reason it matters to us is because of whose hand we put it. So I take my $200 and I put it in another man's hand. And he got a new car. And he bought a new suit. And, he, and now you, 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 you've literally, what you've done is you've said the money that God gave to me to steward. I don't trust the people who God trusts to steward. But my problem is that that person don't have to deal with you. That person got to deal with God. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that, I, I, that make, make sure that the promises between me and God are good. And I'm not going to worry about what everybody else did. I'm, not going, I'm just not going to worry about what the people are doing. With. I'm just not going to. Now, here at this church, we show you. Oh, we show you. We'll, at the end of the year, we do a whole big thing. We play music, put it up on the screen. We took in this much money. We, it went out this place. We paid these salaries. We paid the CPS. Lord Jesus, Pastor Ravon. Tell somebody in here about that CPS bill. That's some grown man stuff right there. That's some grown man stuff right there. You read the CPS bill, you'd be like, all right, we, o <clears throat> we okay. <laughs> but, but it's just so, so that we can, so that it's the exchange. Do you see what I'm saying, D? It, it, it's, it's the exchange. We, and we could definitely talk more about it. But it's, it, because it, it, if it's been perverted for 20 years, I'm not going to clear it up in 20 minutes, okay? So, but, but I want you to understand something. It's a priestly exchange. It's a priestly exchange. And, and God even knows it's going to hurt. God even knows it's a big deal to you. That's why he says, test me. Test me. Test me. The only place in the Bible ever, anywhere that says test me is right here in Malachi 3. Test me. Test me. If it don't work, stop doing it. If, it don't, if tithing don't work, stop doing it. You know the first miracle of tithing, though? You want to know the first miracle of tithing? When you start tithing, the first miracle you notice is that you don't miss it. I'm not playing. I mean, that's the first one. Before you start getting any blessings, open windows, and you know, all the rebuke the devour, driving the same car for 14 years, the first miracle is you're like, man, I'm doing the same stuff. I'm doing the exact same stuff. But I gave God a dime on my dollar. I'm doing, that's the first miracle. You all, you're like, it's not even that big a deal. The first miracle is that God will keep you because he's a keeper. <laughs> but I'm telling you, this is a place where he said, test them, test them, test them. Look, can you, did you see back here? Y'all doing this? Y'all know I ain't saved that. Oh, I'm just joking. We got a question back here. Uh-uh. I got it. No, his, that's a... Amen. Amen. Oh. This might be a weird question. I'm an eccentric kind of guy. But I'm, I'm good with the tithing. I'm good with the blessing people. Uh, what messes me up is the love. <laughs> no. <laughs> you see my wife's car. You see my wife's car. <laughs> uh, uh, but so I get my issue. So what messes me up, the love of money, right? I love money. And so because of that, because of that, I'm willing to give it, willing to bless, willing to tithe. I do it all. But because I know 
it's coming back to me. Is my heart messed up? <laughs> like, I'm going to give you 100 bucks, but I'm like, really, I'm using you. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> you know, what you don't know is that's going to be 150 next week. So I'm going to say two things. I'm going to say two things. Hot, honest, open, and transparent. We're getting hot in here. I'm going to say two things. The first thing is that, and this will help everybody in this room. I don't know your heart. Only God knows your heart. The Bible says, man, look at the outward appearance. God, look at the heart. I have looked at his heart and rejected him. So, so the truth is, your behavior, I mean, you know, the, your behavior for me, that, that, I understand where you're coming from. Now, the second thing I'll say is, first thing is, I don't know your heart. That's between you and God. You need to get your heart right before you come up here next Sunday and sing worship to them. <laughs> That's why we don't let the musicians sing. We just let them play. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, hear me right here. I don't know your heart. But this is what I do know. Um, is a farmer, does a farmer have a bad heart because he sows seed in this season to reap it in the next season? I mean, you know, he could. But the truth is, I, I, I know what I put in the ground, and I have an expectation that it'll come back to me. And put in the ground. It's the expectation. When I bounce a ball, I assume that ball gonna come back up. I don't got a bad heart. <laughs> I just assume that when I throw it down, it's gonna come back up. And so, if you know, th this is reaping and sowing. Now, in relation, again, don't get it twisted. It's the principle. See, it's the law. The law is true until there's a greater law in play, okay? The law is true. All law is true until there's a greater law in play. And the law of sowing and reaping is true. There's no greater law. So when you sow, you're going to reap, okay? Until there is a greater law in play. Now, the law of the tithe is greater. The law of the tithe, the law of the tenth is greater because it's straight from God. It's a promise straight from God. He said, I'll do more than just give you back what you put in. I'll more than just multiply your seed. He said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. So there's a part of that where you, you, you're doing what God said regardless of it. Uh, you don't have a bad heart. And, you, and I'm, I'm going to say this. You don't love money. You love them kids. You love your wife. You want the best for them. And you know that in this life, Ecclesiastes 10, 9, money answereth all questions. So what you're trying to do is give them the absolute best because I've seen you go without. Now, we can really get into this because you, we just talked about your car. I'd have, I do know what you drive. And if you love money, you wouldn't drive that. You drive that because you love your family. You love your family. You make a sacrifice for your family. You... you, you you made a sacrifice, man. I've been knowing you since you was 11 years old. You don't love no money. Why are you in here talking to these people? You know what I mean? This is a brother who had uh, wheelies. Heelys. You remember this? This little brother used to be, he'd just take off running and then just. I love money. You don't love money. You, you, you love life. You love going, you, enjoying your life. That's not wrong. That's not wrong. God, God is rewarding you because of your love and faithfulness to your family, to your children. That's why you're looking all tanned and stuff because you just came back from a cruise. You know, if you love money, you would have you you put all that money in a bathtub and swam around in it instead of taking your whole family out on that cruise. Do you understand what I'm saying? That you love... You, that's what, when I look in your, if I look in your bank account, it'll show me that you love them kids. You love your wife. You love your wife. <laughs> Casey came to me. Well, how old was you when you married Pam? No, let me see. How old were you when you asked Pam to marry you the first time? Huh? 25. Casey came to my house. He, put, he said, I'm going to ask Pam to marry me. 
I said, boy, Pam just broke up with you last week. What are you talking about? You're going to have Pam to marry you? I said, man, you got the cart before the horse, player. You better go get your girlfriend back first before you try to propose to her. Okay, all right, sorry, man. He loved it, you know, but this is what I'm saying. You love your family. You love your wife. You love your children. That's, it's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that. That's not love and money. Does that make sense? Okay. So how many realistically do we have time for? Okay. Okay, this is what I'll do. We'll do GC3 style. We'll, just, we'll do GC3 U style. Yeah. Okay, we're going to end church. We're going to take up the offering. Oh, y'all suckers thought we were taking up the offering today. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean that, so I don't mean that. I'm sorry. I got too comfortable. Okay, we're going we're gonna to end church. We're going to take up the offering, right? We're going to pray, and then <laughs> I love y'all, man, for real. Uh, and then I'll come back out. I'll come back out. I know we have Activate Clap. We'll do, every, we'll do it all, but I'll come back out, and then whoever's still here, then I'll answer your question. And if everybody leaves, then y'all know everything, all right? I'm just, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, we love you, we give you glory and honor. Lord, I pray now, Lord Jesus, for each and every person under the sound of my voice, Lord, I, I pray that there was some clarity today. I pray that people uh, receive some clarity, not just about money, God, but about your character, God. Because it's your character that we chase after. It's your character that we see, Lord Jesus. And you, you, you use money as a tool to show us us, God. You use money as a tool to show us what we trust, what we love, what we believe in. God, but I'm believing today that there are some people in this room, thank you, Jesus, who are, who are because they made a spiritual breakthrough today, they're going to make a financial breakthrough today. Not because we need it, because they need it. Some, if, if a farmer needs more uh, harvest, God, he sows more seed. But I'm believing that there are some people in this room who are going to just take a faith step. Some people are going to take their first faith step. They're gonna, they never gave 10% before. They never tithed before. Lord, I pray, God, that you anoint the tithe, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that they can see tangible. Like, Lord, you said some 30, some 60, some 90-fold, according to their own faith and according to the level at which they sow. Lord, I'm praying, Lord Jesus. And I want them to know, God, I want them to know, God, that, that sowing into the kingdom is not a fix for bad money management. As they sow into the kingdom, I need them to know that they still need to work on their money management, Lord Jesus, so that they can live their best life. Lord, I'm praying for each and every person in here to live their best life. God, we love you, God. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you do me a favor and just stand to your feet? Let's give God glory all over this building. Come on, come on. Y'all can do better than that. I know y'all. Some of y'all been sitting for a while. Let's give God glory. He's worthy. He's worthy. Okay. okay.